you know, I've obviously done a lot of radio and, and I've done acting. I've been on the other side. It's, it's really great to be on the other side of, and watching the actors come sweat bullets for me. But I've, I've always wanted to direct. You know, I always wanted to have that control. And, and, and I'm not a control freak, but that's one of the reasons why, you know, I go out and get my own investors. So I don't have a studio saying, you need to make the film like this. And Because once they invest, they try to take over. And action. Hi, I'm Shivani. I'm sitting with TV and radio personality, Russ Parr. Hi, I'm Russ Parr. And I'm a radio, 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 where's my script? Radio TV personality. And I'm legendary. Thank you. What was your inspiration for this film? I actually wrote this movie about 10 years ago. I, I actually used to do stand-up comedy when I was first, you know, trying to get into the entertainment business because I thought, okay, if I do stand-up comedy, most comedians wind up on television and movies and things like that. And the behind the scenes of the comedy club was nothing like what I expected. It was, um, it's a very sad existence. You know, you see these people, they're laughing, they're smiling all the time. But in reality, they have so many demons. And most comedians that have seen this movie said, man, you hit it dead on, you know, because it, it is reality. I was at the store the other day. I mean, I mean supermarket. Y'all call it out here in L.A. The antagonist is the big spotlight. Because when you're a beginner, that spotlight, it's a beacon of fear. You ain't shit. And you ain't never going to be shit and you can't see anything in the audience. But as you get better as a comedian, that light kind of goes away in your eyes and you can actually see the audience. This film is about like four young African-Americans that, that uh, go to Hollywood and try to make it. Obviously, uh, there is a suicide. One of them jumps off the roof of a building. You don't know who it is until the end of the movie because um, they all give you uh, four very uh, compelling reasons as to why they would be the ones to jump off the building. So um, this, the movie is loosely based on my life. I embellished some things to add to the drama. A guy did jump off the building, but it wasn't one of my friends, but that was just to, to, to have a storyline. Uh, but uh, all the things that happened in the film did happen. So from TV to comedy, radio, you've now taken the director's chair. Mm -hmm. This is the new hat that you're wearing. Right. What has your experience been as a first time writer director? You know, that's, that's a good question because, you know, I. Um, I was a little concerned. I've directed some a lot of TV, and directing TV is totally different from directing film. Um, I think one of the big things for me um, with directing is, is that you have these big stars, and you're concerned that they're not going to follow your direction. And then when I was doing this, this movie, The Last Stand, you know, I had Guy Torrey, who's a method actor, and Darren DeWitt Henson, who's also a method actor. And they have two different styles, two different approaches. And they had a couple of scenes together. And these guys were, ah. it wasn't like they were competing, but they were just in their world. And I'm like, oh, first time director, feature film. And I had to deal with that. So I had to figure out a clever way to reach them while they're in character. Because if you know anything about method acting, these cats stay in character, you know, and you don't know who you're talking to. Are you talking to Guy or Darren? or are you talking to the character? So um, I figured it out. I'm not gonna reveal exactly how I, how I did it because I don't want it to come off like I'm a genius or anything, but it, it, made, it made the scene work, you know? I, I think the big thing was getting used to everybody treating you like you're a god. Mm -hmm. Hey, the director's coming in, you know, walking, oh, here comes Russ, here comes Russ. And I'm not that kind of guy. You know, on my first day of shooting, I told, I told everybody, hey, look, I'm gonna need you for 22 days. Uh, some, some days are gonna be long days. If you're tired and you've accomplished what you've already accomplished, you want to sit down, that's fine. And these are all union guys looking around like, that's a setup. I said, no, really? And, and, and what I used to do at the end of the day, I used to buy beer and wine for the crew. And my producers were really upset. Don't do that. Don't do that. You're, you're going to blow it. But the interesting story is because I, I, I like to be liked. That's just a big problem of mine. And I get used sometimes. But what happened was when we were shooting in L.A., somebody called the union because we were a non-union. Um, uh, we had to use union actors, obviously, but the crew was non-union. So they called the union in to try to bust us, you know, bust the union. You know, say, hey, listen, guys, you walk on him, we'll get you your union status. Well, they almost walked, but they, one of the guys said, man, we can't do this to Russ because he's treated us good. The guy buys his beer, he takes us to dinner. And when everybody, I thought about it, everybody's telling me, don't do that for those guys. I thought, 
See, it pays to be a good person, you know, and, and show them that you really care. And they didn't burn me because it would have cost me an extra million dollars, you know, if they walked. That would have been a problem. Well, every crew member is vital to, to creating a film. Mm -hmm. And, th and that's, a, that's another point. I'm glad you said that because I like the input of everybody. Whether I use it or not, I didn't want them to ever stop because sometimes somebody's idea might trigger something that I know will work, you know. And so, uh, and I do that around here. I mean, my interns here on the radio station, they'll tell you, I'll, I'll put you on the radio. Oh, T.I. up in here. Hey, you and Soup, y'all could have been you know, okay. back there. You know, if you got something that you can bring to the table, I'll do that. A lot of people, oh, you can't put them on. I, I work with people, you just put anybody on the radio. It'll take anybody's idea. Well, how are you going to grow? I think so many people get to the point, well, I am a big star. I've arrived. I can't listen to anybody. That's crap. You can always learn. Yeah, American Gangster. American Gangster. Yeah, Denzel, Russell Crowe. Denzel Washington in that joint? Yeah. Right? So, oh, DW. Yeah, DW. Oh, yeah. DW. Yeah, oh, DW. So, you do you change. feel any pressure, like, acting with somebody like Denzel? I mean, nah, man. Me, me, me and Shorty, man, we got along just fine. And uh, he actually offered a lot of insight, man. You know, he told me I was there for a reason, man. All I got to do is... Do me. This movie is going to, to video. Warner Home Video is, is taking it to video. And you know, back in the day, they're like, oh, straight to video, it must be a crappy movie. Um, actually, Warner played, paid a lot of money for the film because they really believed in the film. Um, but I think the big thing is, is that, you know, just because it's going to video doesn't take away from how credible the movie is. Uh, I've shown this movie in a number of theaters where I've we were in Richmond about a month or so ago, and they gave us like a 90-second standing ovation. Um, everywhere I've gone, uh, and I've shown this film in Miami, in Los Angeles, in Atlanta, uh, just all over, all over the country, nothing but rave reviews about it. And I'm pretty modest, and I hate to say it for myself, but I think that people need to go see it for themselves, and they'll see that this is really a good movie. It'll keep you entertained. It'll keep you on the edge of your seat. Buy the DVD. Don't bootleg. No, don't do that.